Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. I wanted to talk about the earthquakes that have been happening on the San Jacinto Fault Zone. The recent events seem to have started with an earthquake, a magnitude 4.9, um, east southeast of Anza, California. 22,208 people reported feeling this earthquake. I have the intensity of these earthquakes on here. See that? And what's concerning is the ANSA region is only supposed to have one earthquake of a magnitude 4.5 or greater every three years. So that April 4th earthquake did have a high intensity originally of 6 that was later changed to 7. Most of the energy was transferred going towards the north. The San Jacinto Fault Zone is one of the most active fault zones and it, it is part, it goes into the um, other fault zone of the San Andreas Fault Zone. Just the other day on the 10th, which was Sunday, there was a magnitude 4.5 earthquake on this same fault zone, San Jacinto Fault Zone which is 110 kilometers in length or 130 miles from comprising, they broke it down into seven sections. 4,385 people reported feeling that earthquake. It too had an intensity of seven. Now this 4.9, they had the same intensity and you probably wonder how could a 4.9 and a 4.5 have the same intensity level of 7. That is anything but normal. Most of the energy from both of those earthquakes was projected going towards the north, kind of like a cone effect. And what's north of both of these locations? Los Angeles, the San Andreas Fault Zone. Uh, why is that concerning? Because the way the mountain ranges are formed if the San Andreas Fault Zone decided to rupture, and I've talked about this many times before, there would be a funneling effect, much like a water hose with a nozzle at the end, you know, cramping, clamping down on the pressure, and then when the water comes out at high velocity, it expands going out towards Los Angeles, and that would create a lot of damage. Here on the USGS website, they show, they haven't updated it, the 4.5 had an intensity level originally of a 5, but they've upgraded it to a 7. And like I said on here, uh, because they only go back 30 days, it's not going to show you that 4.9, which also has an intensity level of 7. Both of these earthquakes, the energy propagated north. On the second of this month in Holtville, there also was only, it was only a magnitude 3.6 with only 77 people reported feeling this earthquake, but it had an intensity value of 5. That energy also propagated north. And look at here, Los Angeles. There was what? One person that reported feeling it there. There was two in Cyprus near Long Beach. And a lot of people in San Diego have also been reporting these other earthquakes, including this one. Again, this is the 3.6. These events are very unusual. Not just the fact that the energy has been propagating north, but the intensity level of these earthquakes is very unusual. Like I said, the San Jacinto Fault Zone is only supposed to have, at least for the last 20 years of research, that's all they've really got is 20 years of research, one earthquake of a magnitude 4.5 or greater every three years. Uh, it has produced at least six large earthquakes in the last century, and USGS has a list of those earthquakes. Uh, 1987, a 6.6, 1968, a 6.5, 1970, 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 a 6.5, 
1954, a 6.4. 1942, a 6.5. Uh, 1937, a 6.0. 1923, a 6.3. 1918, a 6.8. And then in 1899, a 6.5. That's of the 6s. They don't list anything here for the uh, 4.5s or greater. Now, according to Caltech, the slip rate for um, San Jacinto Fault Zone for a major earthquake, um, so let's say a 6.5 or a 7.5, is between 100 and 300 years per segment. It's broke down into seven segments. The most recent surface rupture in the last few centuries was on April 9th, 1968. That was a 6.5 on the Coyote Creek segment. On Trembler, there was uh, a paper about this 4.9, how the intensity level was so unusual for that earthquake. And this was uh, published in showing the earthquakes the 24 hours after the 4.9. It shows here a 5.2 um, in 2005, a 5.0 in 2001. Down here we have the Coyote Creek fault zone. Um, like I said, the, the 4.9 was April 4th of this year, 2020. Here's another map showing the San Jacinto fault zone and some of the other um, segments of this fault zone. It's kind of a poor map, but um, here you can see we got the Salton Sea and you know that we, we had, what, a week ago, that swarm that was occurring on the San Andreas Fault down here by the Salton Sea. I'll show you that. There you go. This is all earthquakes within the last seven days. Remember all that? And then they got the hydrothermal um, plant. Yeah, and they know that fracking causes earthquakes right along this junction of the San Andreas Fault zone. There was a magnitude 3.3 today um, down by Ocotillo. There's been a swarm going on down there. Intensity level of 3. That one too, the energy was propagated um, north, kind of a northwest. Here we got Los Angeles again. Yeah, one response from there. Uh, we got one response from Palm Springs. You can see it's a lot farther going north than it is going south. The response is Palm Desert 1. Um, what's this one? One response in San Diego. Two in um, Imperial Beach. What else? We got one from Chula Vista. One from another one from another area in San Diego. And then down south, one um, boulevard, it says here. These magnitude 6.0 earthquakes are definitely coming a lot sooner than every 100 to every 300 years. Now, according to Wikipedia, each segment was evaluated. There's seven segments of the fault zone. Uh, the probability for a large uh, rupture, uh, they say, is about every 30 years. They haven't had a large rupture um in about, what, 32, 33 years. So it's overdue. The seven segments, um, San Bernardino Valley, San Anzinto Valley, Anza, Coyote Creek, uh, Borrego Mountain, Superstition Hills, and Superstition Mountains. 1987 was the last time they had a large earthquake, which was a 6.6 uh, Superstition Hills. And when that earthquake occurred, um, they had areas that were, where the soil turned to quicksand. There was blowholes. Um, that's where the sand is blown out because of the liquid in the ground. A lot of um, damage occurred. And according to Caltech, the slip was triggered on the Imperial San Andreas and Coyote Creek Fault. Got that, San Andreas. So while they'll tell you that the San Jacinto fault zone is known to be the most active fault zone in the area, 
the recent events of the intensity level, the direction of the intensity level that they're not talking about is very unusual. I think it's just another reminder that people should be prepared for some major earthquake um, in this area, um, San Andreas, San Encinto, etc. Yeah, they should be prepared for a major event just in case. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe and I will talk to you later. God bless y'all.